Hi guys and welcome to today's tutorial in which you will learn how to create this awesome dashboard design in PowerPoint. I will show you how to quickly make such a dashboard from scratch and how to create the different elements such as this gorge on the right, the modern horizontal bar charts on the left or the dynamically adjustable map that is already pre-built in PowerPoint. So let's start right away. Behind the dashboard you can see that I've used a picture background. Yet the picture was not taken by myself, but rather I used a stock photo. I went to pexels.com where you can find free stock photos and footage. I searched for background, scrolled down a little bit and I found this picture. You have to open it, right click copy image, and then you can paste it onto a new PowerPoint slide. Right click and paste picture. As you can see, the picture is not the same size as the PowerPoint slide. Therefore, let's increase its size a little bit and again cut the upper part with format, crop and just pull down this little trigger. Having it cropped, we have a nice background picture. However, as you could see on the dashboard slide, I've masked the background such that it is less prominent and the dashboard pops out. So how did I do that? Just use a simple rectangle, pull it over our picture, get rid of the outline, right click and say format shape. And now go to fill, choose solid fill. We're going to choose black and increase transparency to 50%. And there you go. Now the background picture is less prominent and a little bit shaded. To get our background of the dashboard, let's insert a simple rectangle, pull it onto the slide and let's say we want to have it in the size 16 centimeters times 33. Let's center it in the middle of the slide, get also rid of the shape outline and choose a light gray as a color. Also, let's use a shape effect to make the background more prominent and stand out a little bit more. Go to shape effects, choose shadow and let's choose an outer shadow at the bottom here in the middle. Let's not choose black as a color, but rather a light gray. And as you can see, now we have a very light shadow at the bottom of the background. Next, let's insert our toolbar. We can just click on the background selected, copy and paste it with Ctrl C, Ctrl V, pull it smaller a little bit. Let's say we want to have a height of 0.8. That's all right. And the width is fine with 33 centimeters. Let's choose black, align it with our background, such as it's aligned on the top. And let's get rid of the shape effect. Further, let's label our toolbar and let's just say it's our dashboard. Let's align it to the left. Choose Open Sense instead of Calibri or whichever font you would like. Let's decrease its size. 12 is sufficient. And let's also insert this little search bar on the right. To do so, let's choose a rectangle with rounded corners. Drag it over there. Pull this little yellow handlebar to the very right. Let's insert also the text, which is just search. Choose a light gray as a font color. Decrease the font size to, let's say, 10. Get rid of the border and choose a white fill. Also, let's align the text to the very left and again, choose Open Sans. Now we can pull this little search field into the toolbar such that it's perfectly fitting. Decrease its height. Perfect. Let's also insert magnifying glasses into the search field. Therefore, click on the Insert tab, choose Icons. And there you can already see the magnifying glass. Choose it, click insert, decrease its size and also choose a light gray as a filling color. The only thing that's missing in the toolbar is the hamburger menu on the very right. So let's just take this search field, copy and paste it with Ctrl C, Ctrl V. Let's get rid of the text and decrease the size of this little shape to the maximum. Let's zoom in a little bit. Let's copy and paste it two times. And there we have our small hamburger menu. Let's group it, center it. Now that we're done with the background, let's come to the foreground. In our example, we want to have four data fields. Therefore, just copy and paste the background 
by selecting and clicking Ctrl C, Ctrl V. Choose a different color and in our case a white and decrease the size of the field. Our first data field is going to be an overall one at the top. So let's choose its size and let's say 3.5 centimeters by 32. Let's make sure it's aligned to the middle. For the remaining data fields, again, let's copy and paste this shape by Ctrl C, Ctrl V. Make sure that it's aligned on the left and decrease its size. Let's choose 10.5 in height times 7 for the left data field. And again, copy paste it by clicking Ctrl Shift and pulling it to the left. And say we want to have a width of 12 now. And again, copy paste the third data field. Make sure again that it's aligned on the right hand side and let's leave it with the size. Finally, let's align the three bottom data fields by selecting all of them and make sure that they are horizontally distributed. Now let's bring those single data fields alive. And let's start with the upper data field with the overall information. In my example, as you might remember, I've split the data fields in three different parts. To do so, I've used a table. So let's go to the Insert tab, choose Table and insert a table with three columns and two rows. Let's get rid of the shading. So click here on the Design tab of the table, Shading, No Fill and also let's get rid of the borders. Again, here in the Design tab, click on Borders and No Borders. Even though we've deleted the borders, we need to go back and insert two of them such that we can split our data field into three sections. Therefore, let's mark the middle column of the table, choose a pen color which is black already and choose again border on the left hand side and a border on the right hand side. Now we can pull our table to the bottom and you can see the data field is split into three sections. Let's increase the size of the table and make sure again that it's aligned to the middle. Since we want to insert text in the table, let's choose already the font color and font type. So let's choose again Open Sans. And in the upper row, we want to have a font size of 28. And in the bottom row, we want to have a font size of, let's say, 12. Font color is black in our case. In the very first column, we had our total sales. Therefore, let's just write the total sales here in the lower column and the amount that you want to display. In our case, let's say 2.5 million. Also, we had a little icon to indicate the trend of the total sales. In this case, we also used the icons here in PowerPoint. On the Insert tab, choose Icons, search for Arrow. There you can see this little circular arrow. Select it, click on Insert, and now you can choose the direction of the arrow and also the color. For this dashboard, I've created a color palette in advance that I've pasted here at the bottom of the slide. So let's choose a color from the color palette to color this arrow. Click on it, select the fill color, choose the eyedropper and let's say we want to use the orange. Next, we want to display our average deal size, for example. And let's also use a random number here, which is, let's say, 33,500. Let's also use a visual illustration of the average deal size. In this case, I've decided to use a slider with a regulator. To insert the slider, let's choose a shape, now only a line. Let's choose its color, namely black, increase its weight. And we can also choose the cap type. In this case, let's choose a round cap, which looks a little bit nicer, in my opinion. Also, let's indicate the status quo and also the goal, for example, of an average deal size. So let's insert a text box here at the bottom. Let's type in status quo, choose Open Sans as a font size, and let's decrease the font size to 10, let's say, and copy and paste the text field and let's type in goal. Align the text in both text boxes to the middle and let's insert our regulator. To do so, I've chosen to use a rectangle with rounded corners again. You can either insert it again manually or you can copy and paste one of those hamburger menu bars. So just click on it, 
copy paste. Let's change the color right away. So let's choose a different fill. Use the eyedropper and choose the red from our color palette. Turn it around. Let's zoom in. Choose a border, for example, a light gray and increase the size of our regulator. So let's say this is our status quo. And of course, we also have a goal. Let's choose a circle. In that case, let's make sure the circle is perfectly in shape. And also let's choose a different color for the circle. Let's choose the green from our color palette. And again, a border in gray. And to make it more separate from black line here, let's choose a thicker border, for example, two and a quarter. Make sure the circle is aligned with the line and also with the text box. And here you go. You have kind of a slider menu that visualizes the average deal size. Well, I've almost forgotten to indicate the average deal size or the goal of it. So let's say, for example, it's 40K, which is not yet reached. But in this example, we're on a good way to get there. So let's come to our third and final indication of our top data field, which is the year to date sales target achievement. Let's say in our example, we have reached already 70% of our sales target and we also want to visualize this number. To do so, we're going to use a gauge. And a gauge is quite simply built by using a donut chart in PowerPoint. Therefore, let's go to the insert tab, choose chart, go to the pie chart. Let's choose the donut chart on the very right. And let's click OK. Now we have a default donut chart in PowerPoint. We already see that we do not need those four quarters. So let's get rid of the fourth quarter in the data sheet. So just delete it. I clicked Control and minus. Now we have three left. And since we want to display only half of the donut, we need to make sure that one of the three parts is not shown. Therefore, let's choose for the very first part. So it's not quarter anymore, but part, but let's not bother about the naming. So let's choose for this first part five to indicate that it's half. The second part, let's say it's about three and the third part, it's about two. So you can see in the bottom, the blue part will be invisible. The gray part will be our 30% and the orange part, our 70% that we want to display. So as it looks here, we can increase our orange part. So let's say 3.5 and decrease our third part, the gray one, which is now um, 1.5. After having set our numbers, let's close the data sheet and let's make sure we're going to adjust the layout of the donut chart. First of all, we can get rid of the labels here. So let's click on the legend and just click delete on your keyboard. Second, we need to turn the donut around such that the blue part is at the bottom. So let's click in the format pane on the right hand side. Let's click on the chart such that it's highlighted or marked, which you can see with those little blue bubbles. Click on uh, series options and here choose angle of first slice. And here you can, if you turn the slider, you see that the donut chart turns around as well. So if we choose 90 degrees here, the blue part is at the bottom and will become invisible. To do so, let's click on the blue part such that only the blue part is marked. Click on the fill and line tab here and choose no fill. Also, let's change the color of this very first part. Again, click on it. You see you're already in the fill tab. Choose a full color and use the eyedropper just to choose a color from your color palette. I think we can leave the gray part here and now decrease the size of our gorge or in this case the donut chart. As you can see, I've decreased its size, but there's still the title. So let's also click into the title. Let's delete it such that the chart becomes bigger. Further, we have those borders, as you can see. And to get rid of those borders, let's also click on the chart and choose no line. So there's no borders and you do not see a white line anymore. So I've just pulled the gorge to the left a little bit. And now what we can also do is increase its width. So here again, click on the chart and you go to the series options. And there you can see the donut hole size, which you can choose again with the slider. And if you slide to the left, the hole size decreases. And if you slide to the right, the 
size increases. So let's maybe choose 60, which looks quite nice. Two things are missing. First of all, the labels. To insert the labels, let's just copy this text field, Control C, Control V. Let's also insert the sales target in the middle, which is, for example, 3.5 million. So let's type in 3.5 million, increase its size. And finally, let's also insert this little bubble that indicates our current year-to-date sales. Therefore, let's insert a simple circle. We've already done so for our goal, so let's just copy and paste the circle and drag it over here. Make sure that the aspect ratio is locked so that the width and the length move in line. So if you lock it here, the size, so the width and the height increase simultaneously. If you unlock it, you can increase the height separate from the width, but this is not what we want. Therefore, lock the aspect ratio and increase the size of the circle until it fits into your donut chart. Also, let's change the color. So let's choose the border, which should be the same color as our chart fill here. So let's choose the eyedropper and choose this pink. And let's choose a darker red for the filling. Let's zoom out and choose our dark red from the color palette. And if you want, you can again write into the circle the current year to day sales. In our case, it's 70%. You see it's not fitting in there. So let's decrease the font size to eight. Let's also make sure that the text box does not have any margins. So let's click on um, the size and properties tab here, go to text box and decrease the left margin, also the right margin. And now you can see the number, the 70% change, the font style, and there you go. Let's come to our second data field, now at the bottom left, in which we want to list our top accounts. Therefore, let's first write a headline so that everyone knows what's in this data field, which is sales by account. You could not see it because it's still white font color, but let's mark it, choose a black. Let's make sure that it's the font style of our slide, which is open sense and also decrease it to 12. Make sure that the headline is aligned to the top and to the left. Maybe let's bold it and also make sure we have a subheadline. In this case, we want to say it's our top five accounts and we show um, the percentage of total sales target. Let's unbold and make it italic. By the way, this is going to be a sales inspired dashboard with exemplary fields and illustrative numbers. So it's more about giving you an idea of how such a dashboard could look like than showing real and exact information. However, let me know in the comments if you would be interested in another type of dashboard and other dashboard elements that you would like me to show and create in another video. So let's continue with our sales by account and the horizontal bars. To create them, we're going to again use rectangular shapes with rounded corners. Either you can reuse the ones that you've already created or we can just insert new ones. So let's do this. Insert a rectangle with rounded corners and make sure that the yellow bubble is pulled to the max, to the right. Let's choose a different color. In our case, get rid of the border. Maybe let's choose the same one as we have here in our gorge. So let's use the eyedropper. And now it's the same gray. Let's copy and paste this shape with Control C and Control V. Make sure that they are perfectly aligned on the top and on the left and decrease the size of the upper one. Let's also change the color. So go to the fill color. Let's choose the eyedropper and let's choose from our color palette, in this case, the yellow. Let's also insert a title. So let's just copy and paste the text field from here, drag it over there. And let's say it's our account number one that makes, for example, 22%. Maybe let's also bold the account name. Let's pull the horizontal bar up a little bit since we need to copy and paste the account five times. Of course, you can also show your top three, top six or whatever. 
So let's choose all of those elements, group them with control G or right click and group or in this case ungroup because it's already grouped. And now you can copy it five times either with control C, control V or just having the element selected, clicking control shift and pulling it downwards. So you copy the exact element five times. Now you only have to make sure that they're vertically distributed. So select all of them and distribute them and then you can change the account name, the percentages and also the yellow part of the horizontal bar. Next we're coming to our third data field where we're going to show sales by product. Since we also want to insert a title here in this element, we just copy and paste the format of this first data field. So click in the box, choose the format painter and paint the format to this second box and also to the third one. Now we can write the title in there and also the subtitle. In this case, we want to show the top three sales by product. To do so, we want to choose different illustrations. And the first one is a donut chart again. To insert a donut chart, let's again go to the insert tab, choose charts, go to the pie chart, on the right hand side donut and again insert a donut chart. Similar as before we need to adjust it based on our needs and in this case we only want to show two areas. Therefore let's get rid of the third and fourth quarter. Now only two parts are left and let's say for example in the first donut chart you want to show 80 versus 20 percent. So let's say 80 versus 20 or 8 versus 2. Close the data sheet and also get rid of those labels. So the title and also this legend over here. Let's decrease the size of the chart, position it and now we can format it. To format the chart again, right click on the chart and say format data series. Again, you can choose the whole size, which we want to decrease a little bit, say 60. And also let's choose the colors. Again, let's make sure it's only this one part selected of the donut chart. Click on solid fill and let's choose the color and make sure the second part is not orange, but gray again. Since we want to insert a text in the middle of the donut chart, again, we want to increase its size a little bit. And let's also again decrease the width of the donut chart. So let's click on uh, the series options and increase uh, the whole size to let's say 70 or even 80. Let's copy and paste our donut chart. Make sure that again that all of the charts are nicely aligned and distributed horizontally. Let's say in the second donut chart we want to show a different percentage or distribution. To change the numbers click on the donut chart and click on the design tab in the chart tools, go to edit data and just edit the data in the PowerPoint data sheet. Here again, let's not say eight versus two or 80% versus 20%, but rather say 66%, so 6.6 .6 versus 33, so 3.4. Close the data sheet and change the color of this donut chart. So choose the red part, choose the eyedropper and let's choose again our pink. Similar with the third donut chart, let's choose the data and let's say we want to show 40 versus 60 percent, so 4 versus 6. Select the colored area and choose the color here with the eyedropper. In this case, let's again choose our green. To insert text in the middle, Let's again copy and paste one of the text fields centered in the middle of the donut chart and let's type in the percentages and for example product A or product B or whatever you want to type in there. You can bold 80 and make sure that the text is a little bit bigger such that people can also read it. Let's duplicate the text field for the other two donut charts. Next to the target achievement that we've just shown here, we also want to show total sales year to date. So therefore, we're going to create a bottom part of the second data field. Let's insert kind of a separator by just copying this line. So copy and paste, control C, control V, pull it over such that we have it now separated into the upper part with the target achievement and the lower part where we're going to insert a simple bar chart. 
Therefore, again, we are making use of the PowerPoint charts. Let's go to the Insert tab, choose Chart, and just insert a simple column chart. Click OK, and the pre-built default column chart appears. In our example, we only want to show our three products. Therefore, we only need three categories, so we can get rid of the fourth one. And also, we do not want to show several series, but one is perfectly fine. As with all of those charts, you can tailor them, of course, based on your personal or project requirements. To change the selected and shown data, just pull these areas to the left so the shown area is also changed. Let's close this data sheet. Make sure we delete the label on the bottom and decrease the size of the chart. There's still the title, so let's also get rid of the title. And if we want to again label our bars, we can choose our product names or whatsoever. So maybe let's go back to the data field and change the categories into our product A, product B and product C. For the sake of simplicity, we're not going to change the numbers here for the bar chart. However, of course, the color. So let's click into the bar chart such that only one bar is selected. Click again on the format pane and choose a different solid fill color, namely the same one that is in the donut chart above. Also, let's make sure that we have the same font type as on the overall dashboard. So let's select the entire chart and choose Open Sans or whichever font you prefer and also choose a black font color. Maybe you've already noticed that I'm only using the embedded simple data sheets to adjust the numbers of those charts. And this is simply because in this tutorial, we are building a dashboard mockup, meaning it is not dynamically linked to an underlying and constantly updated data source. Rather, such a mockup is used to design a dashboard and get a feeling of how it could look like before it is eventually implemented or finally linked. But if you would like me to transform this dashboard mockup into a dynamically linked one with Excel, such that it's always updated once the underlying Excel data is updated, just let me know in the comments down below, such that I can create a separate tutorial for you. Now let's go on with the final data field in which we want to show the top six countries by total sales year to date. So let's insert this heading respectively. If you want to show sales by country or average deal size by region or whatsoever that involves a geographical component, I would always recommend using a map if it makes sense. In our case, we are going to use a world map to indicate the countries with the highest sales. And the good thing about PowerPoint, but also Excel, is that they provide an easy to use, fully customizable world map. Just go to the Insert tab, choose Chart, go to Map on the left side and click on OK. As you can see here, this default map is automatically inserted. Let's decrease its size pull it over here and let's also get rid of the title and the legend just by clicking on the text, right click delete or using the delete button on the keyboard. In our case, we want to show six countries. This is why we first get rid of the default data and let's type in the six countries that we want to display. To highlight the countries on the map, we just need a dummy data, which is the exact same number for all of the countries. So let's just say 10, for example, close the data sheet. And now let's look at the map. Now you can see that the countries that we've just typed in the data sheet are highlighted in the exact same color. You can either ignore this information button here or just click on it and get rid of it by clicking on the red cross. Now let's also insert our data labels. Just use one of the text boxes, copy and paste it with Control C, Control V, pull it down here, align the text on the left and type in the respective country. Also, let's use a circle to indicate the color that is matching to the color in the map. So let's copy the circle, for example, again, Control C, Control V, pull it down here, align it with the text box, get rid of the border and also decrease its size a little bit. So let's say 0.5. Let's group both the text box and the circle by Control G and now copy and paste it six times. 
Now that we have our text boxes, we can change the text and also the color of each and every country. Finally, we have to match the colors in the map to the colors down below in the legend. So let's just zoom in a little bit. Click in the map, choose the respective country by clicking twice on the respective place. And you can see in the format pane on the right hand side, again, the option to choose fill and line. So click on it, click on solid line. And in this case, we're coloring Mexico, which is black in our case. So let's choose black. Just proceed with each and every country the same way. So choose the respective color such that it matches to the legend down below. So there we go. This is our final sales dashboard. As I already said, this is only an example and should illustrate the different visualizations, chart options and so on that you can use. Of course, you can tailor it and adjust it by your own personal means. And again, it is only a dashboard mockup, which shows how a final and kind of real time dashboard could look like. So if you want me to transform this mock-up into a real and dynamically linked dashboard, again, let me know in the comments down below and I'm happy to create it for you. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you like the dashboard and don't forget to subscribe such that you will always be informed about further tutorials.